Hello friends, my name's James. And this is my 1965 Alberg 30 Sloop SV Tritea. We're on a mission to sail around the world and see as much of this beautiful planet as possible. On this season, we're working our way through New Zealand. I want to share with you all the magic that is Aotearoa. Morning. It's like 12:30 a.m. Once this coffee is knocked out and that bagel's in my belly, we're gonna get underway. Um, can hear the wind gusting a little bit, so I know the wind's here, which is good. It's what we were waiting for. Time to get out and point for Cape Brianga. are underway. Winds are very light. Um, I suspect we'll be motoring around the Cape, all the way around the Cape, to make sure we stay out of the danger. Winds are like maybe eight or nine knots right now, so not enough to really get us moving. But we're on our way. Excited to be doing it. Glorious sailing. I was able to kill the engine around 7 a.m. after our slow, slow slog around the Cape. We had like a two knot contrary current. <laughs> Made it a very slow go. But we've had really amazing sailing since then. It's rained a bit, now it's cleared up. It's nice and sunny. See the coastline? Actually, I have a little cell phone service, which is shocking. Should have these conditions all day today, 12 knots. I have two reefs in the main and the full, like, 125% gen, uh, Genoa out. And we're doing, like, between five and six knots consistently. Flat and happy. Just how I like it. Beautiful sailing. We 
we are approaching and are gonna pass Tauroa Point. A lot of sand dunes on it, pretty cool looking. And this is the closest we'll be to land for the rest of the passage till we get to New Plymouth. Um, we're about seven miles offshore right now. Been really fantastic sailing today. Like dreamy, dreamy sailing all day. Good winds, probably blowing 12 knots average. The seas aren't too crazy. And um, yeah, been a really, really nice day of fast sailing. We've been averaging between six and seven knots like for the majority of the day, which is awesome. That new brand new bottom job really helps a lot as well. So um, yeah, happy to be chipping off the miles. And uh, oh, <laughs> uh, here's an albatross. <laughs> I saw a couple of albatross as I approached the point the other day, but um, <clears throat> these are the first ones I've seen in New Zealand. Massive, majestic, amazing birds. Look at this, look at this sailing we're doing. Heaven. I think it's time to set up wing and wing. Our winds have backed quite a bit and I wanna get more offshore than we are. And we're not pointing on our rum line at the moment because of the winds have changed directions. Um, but if I turn the wind vane anymore, then the head sill is gonna be useless and just flogging. So time to rig up wing and wing and uh, get running with these. The following seas are coming up for sure um, but that'll help our speed so let's get it set up The wind and the seas are very um, mellow right now. Doing that in like very large seas is really tricky. Takes a lot longer than it took me just now. And now it's nice because we're all set up before dark. If I had waited for it to back anymore, it would have been dark and more annoying. So we're becalmed right now. We've been becalmed for, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. But I can hear the wind and see the wind aft of us. It's crazy. I've never seen such a stark line. And I can hear the seas and the wind, but not here. Like, it's very glossy here. And then out there is a lot of texture. And if you were here, it sounds like low radio static almost. I've never had this experience where I was in this hole of 
totally oily sea and then I can see the wind it's got to be blowing 10 knots because I can see white caps and I can hear it but there's no wind very strange but we're just kind of bobbing around the grid file says the wind's supposed to fill in this hour and then just slowly rise in small increments throughout the night with the highest winds being like tomorrow midday I think of like it's forecasted to be like 17 knots or something nothing crazy but I just want to share that because it's very strange I can hear dolphins. Oh, so many. I can hear them. Hear them? Oh, so loud. That was amazing. I could hear them before I even knew they were here. Awesome. Easy night of smooth sailing. The winds filled in after being becalmed. We had a very good night of steady sailing. And now it's built to kind of where it's supposed to level out. This is 17 knots. And um, we have some really good sailing happening right now. It's interesting. I've done so much like running wing and wing in the trade winds where it's like 20 knots is common, 20 to 20, 25 is pretty strong trades. But the difference is like in the trade winds, the seas are so big and powerful from like building up of that wind over a vast area where this is just like the wind is gonna be 17 knots for less than 24 hours. So the seas aren't gonna have a chance to build up to the strength of the trade. So. I thought it was going to be this crazy motion that I've experienced in the trade winds. But instead, it's just like a sleigh ride, man. We are flying. We're doing like six and seven knots regular and a very comfortable motion on the boat compared to what I'm used to. So, stoked. Um, the wind is going to slowly back. Uh, so every few hours i'll have to adjust our course a little bit to keep with the wind and then at some point i would imagine after noon i'll have to switch the configuration so we're still wing and wing but the mainsail's on the other side um, as those winds come around but time for me to have more coffee and to get back into my book So the winds have backed as forecasted and we are now not pointing where we want to be pointing. So it's time to tack the wing and wing set up and um, get us back on our course.
just reset the sails as the wind is backing try to get us back on course picking up now might have to take down my rain tarp getting a bit feisty um, but yeah we are back closer steering to our rum line than we were and I'll have to keep continuing to trim the sails because the wind's going to continue to back through the afternoon seas are finally catching up to the breeze though Just tied in the third reef got a little spicy out it's probably blowing 20 constant maybe more gusting higher um we just kept running off too hard putting too much stress on the boat and on me so um went and tied the third reef in got the panels down lashed up <clears throat> we're bearing the rails a lot so but uh yeah a little eventful Winds are dying down. I need to shake this third reef out. I'm gonna change our course a bit first. I'm hesitant to shake this third reef out. Sometimes these storms trick you. There's a lull. I should go look at the grid file and see when it's supposed to be done, but we need more speed. Oh, you fucker. My little New Zealand flag is like blown in half almost, so I gotta get a new one when I get to Nelson. I got it knocked out we'll see if that comes back to haunt me but i think i think everything's gonna start coming down now so i think it was the right move it's been
been like falling for the last like, I don't know, 40 minutes or so. It's gotten lighter and lighter. Now it's just the big seas and not enough wind to pin us down. So we gotta keep on trucking. And the wind has now backed so that it's, um, we're, uh, we're on a beam reach now. First taste of the Tasman Sea. It's no joke out here. But, you know, went out in this to use these winds to get south. Here around New Zealand, the winds, it's either like too much or not at all. So you gotta, you gotta pick your window and use what you can and um, deal with consequences. Well, we made it within 60 miles. Um, we're totally becalmed now, so I've got to get the Iron Genie fired up and get underway. like a nice visit from some friends in the morning. We are entering Port Taranaki and low clouds coming in. Hopefully it doesn't rain on us before we get the anchor dropped. But I'm looking forward to getting in, getting the hook set and uh, relaxing. So, this is listed as like the anchorage. It's actually the only safe anchorage on the entire west coast of New Zealand, north side of New Zealand, uh, west side of the North Island of New Zealand. And on Navionics, it's listed as the anchorage. 
behind this breakwater for protection. And you come in and it's solid mooring balls. Like there's nowhere to anchor. I anchored right in the middle of the mooring field because I didn't know what else to do. There's nowhere else I can go. <laughs> there's like literally nowhere else I could go. A little strange to me. I think it's criminal that they fill every spot with mooring balls when there's like transiting yachts that need a safe place to ride out weather. And all these balls are empty. Like maybe the boats are out, but like 70% of the balls are empty. Maybe more. We'll see. I'm going to anchor here. If they tell me to move, then I guess I'll move, but I'm not sure where they would have me move to. So we're here, New Plymouth, Port Taranaki, and um, I'm glad to have the hook down, uh, even in this very weird spot. The rains have passed, so I'm gonna go ashore and I'm gonna see if I can hike to the top of that rock right there. There's, um, someone mentioned it online and then I looked it up and it seems like doable. Pretty steep, but it'd be neat if I get up there. And it's not a far walk. And it's not supposed to rain again until five, but I bought, brought my rain jacket because this is New Zealand. So, Let's head in and go check it out. I lucked out <clears throat> when I was getting, tying the dinghy up and walking up. A uh, nice couple came up to me and said, oh, the man from America. They are, uh, they watched the YouTube channel and they'd come down to the wharf to get a peek at Tritea in their, anchored in their harbor. And so then we went and got coffee and um, then they gave me a ride to the base of the rock. So they saved me a ton of walking and uh, I'm excited to get up top now. I made it without dying. Ooh, that was cool. That was a neat little ascent there. What a view. What a view.
definitely worth the hike. Really, really nice view up here. It's fun to see, like, <clears throat> that's where I was sailing across for the last two days, two and a half days. And then tomorrow morning, I head that away, around that point, and uh, point for Marlboro Sounds. Stoked on this little hike. Really beautiful. This landing, I want to show you guys this crazy recycle thing. Really neat. And then these big, I don't know if they're oil or gas canisters, but the the lids float with the height of the the, the uh, whatever fuel or oil that they have in there. And I think that's to keep, so that there's no fumes in the thing, so it makes it less explosive. So that the, the top of it just goes down with the gas or oil and um, there's no fumes. Really crazy. It's time for bed. I have to get up at 3.30. I want to be hauling up the hook at 4 a.m. We need to drive around the Cape before, like, it's going to take like five hours or something to drive around the Cape to get into Cook Strait. And um, we need to do that before the winds start to increase because otherwise they're going to be right on the nose. And also, <clears throat> I need to be ahead of the wind that's happening tomorrow. So, if I leave at 4 a.m., I'll have really good sailing wind all day across Cook Strait, uh, Southwesters. And by, like, tomorrow night around midnight, they're going to get a little spicy in the middle of Cook Strait. By that point, I'll already be past, well past, and um, I should be arriving to Durville Island in the Sounds around like 5 a.m. <clears throat> Should be like a 24-hour passage, 117 nautical miles. So, that's the jam. Got to get some shut-eye. My alarm's going to go off soon, and uh, we'll get the rest of this passage knocked out. All right, underway. A little misty, a little foggy, but I think this is supposed to like blow off in the next hour. So now we're just going to be motoring, I don't know, probably the next five hours. There's not supposed to be any wind until then, so get it done. We have officially left the North Island of New Zealand. We're in Cook Street now. Um, winds have yet to start to fill in even a little. It's like zero knots at the moment. And um, yeah, so now we're just waiting on wind so we can kill the engine and get to sailing. Really happy I left at 4 a.m. to get around Cape Egmont, I think is the name of it. So we didn't have any wind on the nose at all. Um, and uh, we have like 80 miles to go to uh, Durville Island and the latest forecast showed the wind to be a little more spicy than what it's been forecasted but it also said that there's like 12 knots of wind here right now and there's literally zero knots so we'll see we'll sail with the wind we have that's all we can do at this point but very happy to be 
making my way to the South Island. Made a fun discovery earlier. I realized it's been one year. Tomorrow morning is when I arrived to New Zealand and pulled in, got towed into the Q dock and tied up. So that's pretty exciting to be leaving on the day that, uh, you know, the day before I arrive. So I'll be arriving to the South Island the same day, the ne following year that I arrived to the North Island. I like that, it's fun. It's been a wild year, that's for sure. So now I'm just gonna get back in the cockpit and uh, wait for wind. Finally. Oh, the magic of getting to turn off the engine. Very nice. We dropped in speed about a knot, but it's okay. I'd rather not hear the engine. And I know that the wind's gonna build, so. All is well. I had a single reef in the main as a pregame. I shook that out because the wind's so light and I can see there's no white caps, so I know it's not even 10 knots, like anywhere. <laughs> probably blowing like eight to nine right now maybe so use as much of it as we can Wind's building, time to tie a reef in. All right, got that knocked out. We lost a little bit of speed, but the boat was overpowered, so had to do it. And I think the wind's gonna build more, so 
I went ahead and just put in the second reef instead of the first because I know it's going to get stronger tonight and I'd rather do it now in the daylight than in the dark much easier. So that job's all done. We'll just keep clicking off miles till we get into Durville Island. It is very rowdy out right now. The waves are very short period and steep. And uh, yeah, we are getting thrown around like crazy. It's silly out. Look straight, it's very notorious. And this is a very, very mild day. But we have over 20 knots of wind for the last few hours. And uh, pushing on. Shit. <laughs> Pretty big waves out here. Is a big wave. One of those big waves hit so hard it even shot down here and got on my bedding. Not too wet though, just down here at the bottom. Half the battle of this life is like rattle patrol. Oh, my pocket's full of water. Trying to find all the rattles once you get back out to sea from being coastal for a while. Fucker. We have 38 miles to go and we'll be in the protection of a beautiful harbor.
It has been a very rough night, um, as to be expected. We are four miles from entering inside Doval Island. I can't remember the name of this. I can't remember the name of the bay that we're going into, but it's at the top. And then it's still a three mile drive down to where the mooring bowl is. Um, And right now I'm just trying to figure out like when to start the engine. <laughs> the sound of the engine adds like considerable stress for me because then I can't hear anything else that's happening. Um, so soon I'm going to be out there hand steering through the obstacles to get us into the protection of the island. Hopefully it's well protected in there and I can put on the tiller pilot and um, get everything sorted for getting the mooring ball. Like I said, it's three miles, so we have, we'll have have like an, an hour before we actually get to where we can pick up. There's two mooring balls, so. That's the plan. It has been a rough, rough, rough go. The boat looks like it's been capsized, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be excited to sleep when I get to that point. Threading the needle between a rock, big seas, just started the engine. I warmed it up earlier. the anchor lights so I don't think there's anybody out here but if there's a boat on it then we're just going to anchor at the end of this cove but I'd rather just grab the mooring and be done with it it'd be really nice still very very windy up in here
anchored in like 45 feet of water. We have 200 feet of chain out. I tried to find three different moorings and couldn't find them in the dark by myself. That's the problem with coming in at night. But the hook's set and we have plenty of weight out with the chain and the anchor at that depth, so should be have a good night. And we don't have a lee shore. I am very tired. That was a rough end to a wild trip. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching, fair winds until next time.